Yeah. Come on in. What's up, bro? Hey, Matt. You got a few seconds? Sure, sure. Alright, I, I just kind of want to... Can leave the door open? Okay. Yeah. Huh? Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, my clothes, man. I want to sharpen my clothes. Your clothes? Okay. Yeah. I'm dealing with uh, prospecting in um, the Rockford, Belvedere, and Freeport area. Okay, so with which clothes in, like, your, your, your RI? You're closing your phone calls? I'm getting them to come to a BOM. Come to, okay. Here, here in Melbourne. Come out here, come to our workshop. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So, real quick. No, a good person to help us add to this is Nabil, because he just had the same question earlier this afternoon. Okay. We're going to crush it. Nabil! Is Nabil out there? Hey. Excuse me, can you come in for a second? Shout out to Bill, come on in. Listen, you're going to be a great person to, to add value to this answer. Okay. So he, he's, Marquise has got a question about um, his market okay. and, and more importantly, closing that market. Okay. Okay, so, so we talk about being in the A market, right? Part of prospecting, part of attracting people to your, your opportunity, uh, part of uh, attracting people to your agency, um, clientele, is the market. You know, I, I, had a, I had a conversation last year, and um, remember Grant Cardone? Yes. Okay, so Grant Cardone, Grant Cardone was our guest speaker at a conference, and we kept in contact through social media, we still do, and we're, uh, we're having a session called Blab, okay? So we're on this, it's like a live stream for groups. And so, and uh, Grant Cardone's like, man, dude, I love PHP, man, I love PHP. Because a large part of Grant Cardone's story is that when his father passed away when he was 10 years old, that he left a little bit of a life insurance policy for his mom and was able to raise him and his twin brother, you know, to, to at least get through school, same, same home, and, and, and into college. So, um, so his, a large part of his life was blessed because of the life insurance industry. Okay. So he came out, he said, man, here's a problem with PHP. Oh man, here we go. You know what the problem with PHP is? Let me tell you, man, and this is a live blab, so this is not private conversation. This is something he told him on a public lecture. The problem with PHP is the market that you're going after. Hmm. The market that you're going after. In other words, the people that we're attracting. He says, hold, hold, real quick, Grant. He says, that market we're after is your average and ordinary middle class common joke. Right. That was me. So, you have a problem going after me? He says, here's a problem with the middle class. The middle class doesn't know how to make a decision. The middle class is wishy washy. The middle class is, is, is content with uh, settling for the average and ordinary. And, and it's okay to make 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars a year. I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm broke, but I'm not really that dissatisfied with being broke. I really don't want to elevate my position that much. It sucks, my job sucks, but work? I don't really want to work. So, that's the problem with our market. Okay. That's the problem. So part of prospecting is either, here's, here's in the mood. Like doing weed. <laughs> I love doing weed. <laughs> I do I do weed eight times a day. At least. What about you? Yeah? I do weed eight, eight, eight times a day. What am I talking about? <laughs> weed them in or weed them out? Okay. Good. What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to me Alright, so listen, we gotta weed them in okay. and we gotta weed them out. And you can't get hung up on when you gotta weed somebody out. You can't get hung up on, on your on your top 25 list or your referrals that somebody is just ignorant, unwilling to make a decision, um, ready to move forward. So real quick, talk about us being in the A market. So A market, A-I-M, stands for age? Income. Age, income, and married. Or a committed relationship. Right? So, so if, I, if, I'm, if I'm talking to somebody, if I'm talking to somebody, here it is. So when I was at, when I was in the Marine Corps, they taught us how to hit center mass. I know it looks like a big nipple to you, but <laughs> right, this is like a this is like a bullseye, okay. right? And this was a five, this is a four, and this is a three. And after that was a two, after that was a one, and then anywhere here you missed, you missed the target, right? So here's center mass. So if you want to hit center mass in your prospecting, you, you, you're you're, t you're targeting people, you're targeting a demographic, you're targeting people where you got to hit center mass. So here's what this center mass all involves. It's all the, you got aim. Okay. A for age, I for income, and for married. These are the people that are most attracted to what we do. These are the people most attracted to financial independence, time, freedom, and control, uh, taking personal responsibility and doing it. Why? Because people are in their late 20s, 
30s, early 40s, they probably get hit in the mouth a couple times. They kind of know what life is going to give them. And they're willing to say, you know what? I don't want to really work for the man anymore. I want to do something different. And so the more you have people that are between 25 and 45, have some form of job or business, and they have income, they got cash flow come to paying the bills, mm -hmm. and they're married, um, or in a serious commitment. In other words, they may not be married, but they're living together with a kid. Okay. That's a serious commitment. Right. So let me ask you a question. Where do you fit in this? I'm in the center mass. You're center mass. Yeah. You're center mass. You're it. That's why you're attracted to this message. Mm -hmm. Now timing may not have been right when initially came in, but life hit you in the mouth a couple times. And, and now I'm here. And I'm willing to drive, what, an hour and 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah. From Rockford to Oak Brook. And, and time on a Friday night is no big deal even. So, so you've been dealing with doing weed for a minute, right? Yeah. Dealing with people with um, kind of like wishy-washy, indecisive, I got to talk to my spiritual leader, exactly. right? Our faith, our religion, stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? So, what happened today? You're doing RI for somebody. Um, amazing RI. It was a fellow entrepreneur. She saw eye to eye with our message because she's been through her own process of building something up. Yep. And when you build something up traditionally, you have value for our business model. Why? because in traditional market, it's high input and high profitability. Over here, it's not that much of investment and high profitability. Mm -hmm. And to the center mass, as mm -hmm. Matt described it right now, they see that as a golden pot, yeah. right? And so when it comes to weeding in and out of some of these individuals, I guess the best way you can look at it is um, NFL is going through, you know, mm -hmm. trade, signing, mm -hmm. free agency right now. So, you so, 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 so talk to me real quick. What happened when you sat in front of the lady right in front of you? And you're dealing with a lot of people who've been skeptical, mm -hmm. doubt, disbelief, they're hurt. What happened to you? She gravitated right through the message, specifically the page on uh, financial services, franchising, and word of mouth marketing. She pointed directly at the McDonald's logo and said, it takes a million dollars to start up a McDonald's. Right? So, so she gets it. So she got it. Her tires were spinning in her head, and immediately. What about her, Subway? Because Subway's on her too. Yeah, and then she said Subway too, and it takes about three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand to start that up. To be a sandwich she, artist. Absolutely. <laughs> right. And then she said, "Show me the compensation," and she gravitated right to it because she just understood the investment, the time, the energy it took, and she, she saw it as a blessing to start a business. Absolutely. Because think about this too, Marquis. Anytime somebody, let's say they're between twenty-five and forty-five, check, boom. 33% chance they're going to be in business with us. They have a current job or business, boom, you add another 33% chance. Mm -hmm. They're married or in a serious commitment, boom, there's a 34% chance they're going to be in business with you. Add all that up, 100%. You take one out, you're in the fours. You take another one out, you're in the threes. They don't meet all three of them, zero, let's say zero out of three, you're in the twos. You're, you're shooting up here. And, you're, and, and then you wonder, dude, I'm, I'm not hitting center mass. Why? Because you're aiming at the two ring. Okay. And in the two ring, you might hit the one, or you might be off target completely. But now that you're talking to the right market, you weeded them oh. in, or weeded them out and weeded them in. Absolutely. And then what happened to her? She says. She said, well, how, how much does it take to get started? Mm -hmm. Give me everything. Mm -hmm. And then she compared it immediately to real estate. She said, wow, real estate, it takes 1800 to 2000 to get started. It's half of that here. Yeah. Mind-blowing to her. More than what? half. It's like, a, it's like a third. Third. And what, what do entrepreneurs do? They make decisions on a split second. Mm -hmm. She said, what does it get to start it? Got started. What, she's in pre-licensing. Did she freak out that it was 150 bucks? Not at all. Not at all. In yeah. fact, her eyes dropped, and then knowing that we're a privately held company, uh -huh. that's what put the icing on the cake. Awesome, awesome. So, hey, market. So, let's go real quick. Three things that affect your business. Three things that affect your clothes. Number one, who are you talking to? That's what I want to get at. Who are you talking to? Second thing is, what are you saying? All right. And third thing is, how often are you saying it? So, let's go back to number two. What are you saying? So, let's go over your script real quick. 
Right. So, um, hey Matt, I met you at uh, Burger King the other day. Uh, okay. You were dressed nice and sharp. You impressed me uh, with the way you handled your customers. And okay. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, come. I told you that uh, I work for a financial firm mm -hmm. in Oak Brook. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to get an opportunity to sit down with you, uh, explain what it is, what, what, what we do. Okay. Time out. Why are you offering yourself to somebody who works at Burger King at 15 bucks an hour? You think a typical financial firm? is gonna to talk to somebody at Burger King and invite them in. So, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so not to say that that, that that would be the opportunity, it'd be very kind of you to do that. Right. But the, the person is just normally skeptical. Okay. Like, what this person at a financial firm talking to me at home of the Whopper? Okay. Right, so, so number one, um, peel back that offering. The only time you sit down with somebody if somebody shows themselves to be in the desire to make a decision, and more importantly, that they're the decision maker. Third thing here is that they're in the market. And the fourth thing is they haven't qualified themselves. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it here in a second. So, continue with your script. Okay, so uh, I met you at Burger King the other day, and uh, you, you impressed me with uh, how sharp you were dressed. Okay. Um, I told you that I, ran, uh, I helped run a financial firm in Oakland. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to come into the office, sit down and tell me a little bit more about yourself. I'll tell you a little bit more about what the firm is and what we do and how we help people and see if that's a good fit. Cool. In your initial conversation with them when you got their number, what was that conversation like? It was very quick. Um, uh, basically, uh, since I already know where he works. Okay. At Burger King? At Burger King. I asked so they were sharply dressed at Burger King? So the, yeah. He was wearing a tie. Um, White shirt? Black shirt. Actually. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so I asked him, hey, you, you, are you the assistant? Are you the manager? Okay. He said yes, and I said, "Oh, okay. You're dressed real nice. I, I just wanted to make sure. You know, I, I wanted to know what you do here." Then I asked him how long he worked there. He told me uh, three years. Is this where you want to work? Is this what you want to do with the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. He's like, "Well, no." I was like, "Well, do you like the job?" He's like, "I like it. It could be better." I said, well, "What don't you like about it?" Um, I could be paid more. I said, "Okay. Well, you know, I work for a financial firm." Um, we're always looking for sharp people like yourself. Uh, let me get your name and your phone number and I'll give you a call in a couple of days when my schedule clears up. Okay. Give me the name and the phone number. And That'll work. Let's see if you can take, take, the dot, take another step. So what would you change? I can get paid more. Awesome. What would you like to get paid? 25 bucks an hour, 35 bucks an hour. Great. What's your plan to get there? How long will it take for you to make that type of money? And how soon are you looking to make more money? Right? Because you're basically helping them understand the current situation. The current situation is, listen, you're waiting on somebody else to promote you. Mm -hmm. And even when they do promote you, is it 25, 35 bucks an hour, whatever they're going to pay you, is it going to be worth it? Right? And by the way, you look like a sharp guy. Who's in your corner helping you make these type of career decisions? Yourself? Right? So if I can show you a way to get what you want, would there be of any serious interest to you? Yeah, what is it that you do? Have them ask. Okay. Have them ask. Because why are you offering the fact that you're a financial firm okay. up right away? I'm not even so. Have you seen the, the movie uh, The Wolf of Wall Street? I've seen it. Once. Yeah. So he's sitting there minding his own business, right? Yeah. And the guy comes up to me, hey man, I like your car. We live in the same place, right? And he basically showed him an example of success. So, the, so the, my point is, he was attractive just sitting there minding his own business, okay? So that, that's the same way you gotta be if you want to attract people to your, I'd rather pull people than push up on people. See, that's pushing up on people. Now, I, I get when you push up on people initially, but then you gotta pull them. Okay. All right, listen, uh, like the way that you were, uh, and quite funny, bro, I would see somebody in an assistant manager uniform dressed sharp. I don't know if you, were you genuine about that or? Well, I did like his tie. <laughs> Dude, cool time. Not bad for an assistant man. Okay. All right, so man, let me ask you, how long have you been here? Been here three years. You like it, love it? Like it. What would you change? Wish I could get paid more. Awesome. What would most people? So what's your plan to get paid more? So you gotta go from assistant manager to manager. When is it manager moving out of the way? Anytime soon? No. So it seems like you're kind of stuck, huh? So if you're stuck for another year, two years, or three before that guy quits or gets replaced, are willing to deal with the current income that you have right now. Because you're stuck. Unless you move to a different store, unless somebody else gets uh, a, a, a leaves or manager position, you get promoted as a manager. What's the likelihood of that happening? 
In other words, my, my friend, Mr. Assistant Manager, you're not in control. How does that make you feel? You want to change something about that? You want to put yourself in a position you can change things? Or leave things up to chance? What do you want to do? What do you think it's say? Change things? Okay, sounds like you got some good people in your corner, you got the assistant manager. Okay, who's in your corner helping make decisions? Because now you find out who the decision maker is. Okay? Well, I made my own decision, possibly. Listen, I'm not sure what we do is it for you, but we're in the money business. Right? I represent a financial firm. I'm not sure if you like money. You like money? I know it sounds like a rhetorical question, but you'd be surprised how many people say, man, these days, I just want to be part of an awesome message. I just want to hug trees and I want to do right, right? They don't have direct, genuine desires to make money. So I just need to ask you, do you like money? I'm in the money business. You like money? Yeah. You like money? You like helping, uh, uh, you like, you like helping people? I like a lot of money. I do, I do, I do. Awesome. Well, if I could show you a way to take control of your income by introducing to you another career path, career path, I mean, you'd be open, wouldn't you? If I could show you a way to do that, would you listen? And would you make time? On a scale of one to ten, how happy are you with the income that you have right now? I'm at a five. Sounds to me like you're ready to make some changes, yes? Otherwise, you don't make any changes. I come back here to Burger King six months from now, guess what? You're still here. A year from now, you're still here. Right? And would you be okay with that? I mean, it's your business. It's your finances. It's your family. I know where I'm going. Do you? See that? Yeah. A little bit more offense there, huh? Yeah. So yeah, I listen. Great. So if I can show you a way to do that, you listen. Awesome. So if I can make some time in my schedule to show you who we are, what we do, and what's in it for you, would you invest time in your schedule to make time? Because you can't make time. You can't make money, can you? So we're not gonna we're gonna have this listen, it's all the way in an Oprah type of conversation, are we? <laughs> okay, I see what you're doing. Right? Yeah. I, need, I need to know that right now. If you have any problems coming out to our office in Oprah, then I got a problem interview, I'm just not gonna be telling myself. Because it sounds to me like there's nothing else around here that's gonna get you paid what you want. Wouldn't you agree? That's why I had a big move. I'm from here. That's why I drive three, four, five times a week, hour and a half to get somewhere. Because eventually I'm going to be running a branch of my financial, of this financial firm in Rockford, in Rockford, and surrounding community. Most people leave for school and campus and, and study for their college degree and master's for two, three, four, five years. You don't think that same happens in the business world? That's what you call uh, laying the ground for an overnight success, right? Because here's what I know: I can't guarantee because I don't know your work ethic. But this time next year, if you put in the work, you'll be in a much different financial position. I may not share exactly that, what that means to you, but you'll be in a much different financial position in an improved situation a year from now. And what did this lady do? She, she enrolled right away? No. No big deal. No big deal at all. That's it, man. So you got you to understand, bro. Um, the, third, the third part of that is how often you're saying it. So who, it's who you're aiming, it's who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so, if I, so if I'm aiming, aiming at my target right now, boom, center mass. Okay, boom, I gotta, I gotta make sure my alignment is right. I gotta make sure what I'm talking to them about makes sense to them. And then I pull the trigger. What you're doing is pull the trigger and then, right? Aiming at above the target, left to the target, right? Boom, pulling the trigger. Wind's blowing. That time, pull the trigger. So, so you're, you're, you're shooting a little bit, you shoot a little bit from the hip, but if you're a little bit more snipered, so, so role play with me. All right. So let's say prospect. We'll do a prospect and follow. So here, here's how the follow will go. Hey, hey, um, hey, Marquise, it's Matt, it's Matt here. From I met you at the Burger King. Okay. Hey, you, you remember we had a conversation about your career and, and you not making enough money. Are you still in the same situation, or did you resolve that? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, st I'm still at Burger King. Gotcha. So, so, so to follow up with you, you'd be look willing to look at other things. Otherwise, your alternative is your current job. Right. Right. Yeah. And so you can invest. You can invest a little bit of time. By the way, um, I sent you a video between last time we met and this phone call. Did you have a chance to watch it? Uh, no, I, I, I looked at it, but it was too long. Or um, I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't really. No problem. Marquise, you must really love your job then. 
if you didn't have time to watch that video, it could potentially change your life. And I don't think you really want to make a change. And if that's the case, unless I'm wrong, you investing time really isn't coming from a genuine, authentic level. You're not hurting bad enough yet. You're, you're okay with settling for average and ordinary. You just, not, instead of reaching for something that you want, you're okay with okay. Am I right? Well, no, it's not that. I, 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 you know what? I'll take a look at the video tonight. And, and, uh, and then okay. Take a look at the video tonight. As soon as you watch it, send me a message when you're free. Other than that, nice meeting you, and best of luck to you. That's it. Why are we trying to push up on people that don't want, their, their mouths are closed, their hands are clenched. Why are we trying to shove what we do in them? Nine million people here in Chicago, man. Bound to have somebody want an opportunity. Cool, so rope this rope on. Okay. You want me to prospect right now? I'm the assistant manager. Okay. Excuse me, are you, are you, this, are you management here? I am. Is there something wrong? Oh, no, there's nothing wrong. I was okay. just, uh, I was over there and uh, I kind of was watching how you deal with customers and I was really impressed by the way you were um, a good people person and you seem to resolve those issues very quickly and in, in a nice manner. Okay. Uh, how, how long have you been working here? Can I ask that? Yeah, three and a half years. Three and a half years? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, is it safe to say that you like your job? You love it still? That's just, it just pays the bills, man. I mean, I've been here for three years. Okay. So, it's paying your bills. Um, so, is there anything about the job that you don't like? I wish I could get paid more, obviously. Okay, so what um, what steps are you taking to accomplish that? Well, I gotta wait for this manager to get fired or retire or quit, and I can take his job. Okay, and how, how long do you think that's gonna take? Nah, no clue. No clue? Okay, so do you have somebody that's helping you kind of put together a plan to, to get to that next level that you wanna get to? No, man, just me, myself, and I. Just, okay. Um, well. <laughs> Uh, what do you think the next step is? So how serious? So how serious would you be to look into something else? Do you keep your options open? Good. Fine. So how how serious would you be to looking at some other options in terms of your your business options? What is this? Is it like it's like a uh, Amway? Uh, no, not at all, sir. No, no. sir. Why are you call me, sir? <laughs> you're you're the sir. Okay. If anything, you're the sir. Okay. Dude, you got the gold. You got the golden eggs. You're the goose right now. You're the sir. Okay. From here for the rest of your career, right. you're the freaking sir. Okay. So is this, is this like is this like Amway? Uh, no, it's not like Amway. Uh, why would you ask me? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Have you have you been in Amway? I, I've gotten I've gotten approached by people. In Amway. You've been approached. Okay, and are those people you look up to, or are they, are they like? I, you know, just family members, you know. But uh, I, I'm doing. I love them. I just, did, you know, um, soaps, potions, and lotions just ain't my thing. So, is that all you know about Amway? Yeah. Okay. So, how how could you? How would you know to compare with? Why would why would you bring that it, up? It just sounded like somebody from Amway would approach me and tell you. Oh, okay. Well, no. I just wanted to know if you had somebody in your corner helping you out. Getting to that. No. no? Okay. Um, I'm out of my element right now because. Good. I, I really. Good. The way that I've been practicing has been very simplistic in, in my prospect. Of this so, so now that I'm, I'm kind of like out in the. Because you're pitching right away, man. I am. You're pitching right away. Yeah. Nobody wants. Nobody wants to be pitched today. People want to buy, man. They don't want to be sold. So, you, how do you, how do you, how do you get them? How do you get them to be in a position where they need? You gotta find what? What are you looking for? The pain. Pain. You gotta find my pay, man. So, so search. If, you, if, yeah. if you're still here, good. Uh, and the next is making roughly the same amount of money, because that manager's not going anywhere anytime mm -hmm. soon. I mean, at least that's what you told me. Mm -hmm. um, if you're still there, in the next five, ten years, making the same amount of money, I, I, is that is that gonna be enough for you? Of course not. Of course not. So, what are you doing? What are you doing about that? What, are you, what, are, what would you like to do about that? I don't know. What could I do? Just, just, I just hope that uh, somebody sees enough in me and promote me to manager, and I'm running these store, one of these stores myself. How, how, <clears throat> how serious are you about changing your, your current situation? I'm very serious. So if I, if the right opportunity presented itself, why? why? 
Because I got a wife and kids. You have a wife and kids. Okay. And are they dependent on you for your... Of course. Can you afford to put my kid in daycare? Because if my wife gets a job, all she's working for is the daycare. So she might just stay at home. So, is it safe to say that... Uh, drive the pain there. How do you drive the pain there? What's the key question? What's the key question? How does that make you How feel? How does it make me feel? How does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? See, most people like walk around like emotionally bandaged. They don't even realize it. Financially bandaged. <laughs> Makes me feel like shit, man. Makes me feel like shit. What is your wife? How does your wife feel in your whole situation? She don't know. She don't know. If you don't the kids at home. Five and three. Five and three. So, so how, how do you follow up, man? So, dude, how bad are you looking for something? Because here's what I know. make you feel. Yeah. How bad do you want something? On a scale of one to ten. On a scale of one to ten. Ten being bad. Five being, ah, I'm okay. One being, not at all. What would you be? So, in that, in that scenario, probably that person would be at a three. Huh? Oh, ask, you. ask me. Okay, so on a scale of one to ten, uh, one being you, you could leave things the way they are, ten being I really need to make my life change because my wife is at home with the mm -hmm. kids and they're depending on me to bring in the income and, mm -hmm. and I'm the only one that, that's able to work. I mean, on a scale of one to ten, how, how bad do you want to change the situation? Ten. Well, I don't know if this makes sense for you, but I, you know, I run a financial firm. Uh, you're doing it. You're right here. I run a financial firm. It's, your, it's the clothes right here. And <laughs> we're always looking for good people. If the right opportunity presented itself, if I was able to introduce you to uh, make the right connections for you, would that be something that would be important to you? Would that conversation be at the top of your list? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. you, you don't sound very ooh, confident about that. Uh, no, definitely, definitely. Okay. So you check me. See, that's what you got to do. You got to make sure that my words match what I'm saying previously. It's got to be congruent. Otherwise, I'm talking shit. Right? right? I'm bullshitting you. Right. A lot of people bullshit out there, man. So go ahead. So if it's important to you, uh, are you willing to make time and take the effort to, to come down to the office so I can find out a little bit more about, about how this might work out. Sure, I would. Okay, let me, uh, let me get your name. So easy. And uh, your phone number. It's so easy, see how easy that is? See, the, the getting my information is just a natural progression. No hesitant. Now let's, let's say I give you a hard time. All you gotta do then is walk away. All you gotta do is walk away. Listen, if uh, he's giving me a hard time, listen, probably the wrong conversation. Appreciate the way you treat your customers. Continue good work. I'm out of here. Have a good night. Bounce. But if he's really showing some serious interest, no, dude, I really, I'm a 10. That's showing I'm buying. I'm buying into it. I'm getting closer. And now listen, if, would you invest some time to find out how? Between me calling you, between the next time we talk, I'm going to send you a video to show you a little bit about our firm, about who we are, what we do, and what's in it for you if you have any remote interest in doing so. And here's the thing, man. By the time I call, I hope that you have watched that video. If you don't watch it, I know you're not interested. You're, again, you're checking. There's a lot of people say they want to change, but they don't really do anything about it. That wouldn't be you, would it? You said you're a 10. It would be. Okay. So what's, what's a good time to call back? Tomorrow afternoon? A couple days around the afternoon? Which one? Not, it's which, not if. Okay. Go ahead. So, um, okay, I got your number. Um, so I'm going to send you a video, and I want you to take a look at it. That way I'll know if you're serious about the opportunity, uh, if, if one exists. Uh, I'll know you're serious about reaching for it.
Yeah. Um, so when's a good time to call you back? After, when I know you've watched the video. Keep your options. Because it's, it's, it's too open-ended. Open so if I call you by Tuesday, will or, you have watched? Or if I, call you by, if I call you on Tuesday or Thursday, will you have watched the video? Right? Which one would which one work better for you? Which one would work better? Because mm -hmm. if you guys were, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like you, you're rolling up on me. You kind of give me an ultimatum. Okay. So if I call you on, on Tuesday or Thursday and you watch the video, which would work better for you? Okay. So if I call you on Tuesday or Thursday, so that way you can have time to watch the video, which would work better for you? Thursday. Thursday? Okay. Uh, morning or evening? Yeah. Afternoon's good. Afternoon is good? Okay. Mm -hmm. I will give you a call. And hopefully uh, you'll have watched the video by then, so that way we can discuss a little further what, what might be in it for you. Sound good? Well, cool. isn't that a lot better now than... What, I, what I'm asking you to do is use what we call, not IQ, but EQ. EQ. See, he knows it. See, IQ is cognitive intelligence. It's like if you were born a genius, you're, you're, that's cognitive intelligence. Problem solving, smarts, intelligence, that's, that's cognitive stuff, yeah. right? Now, there's nothing you can do to be a genius. Like, I can't study this, I didn't get this degree, you'd be a genius, dude. You're either smart, you got the DNA for it, or you don't. There's really nothing you can do to be cognitively more intelligent, okay? But there's other part of intelligence, which is EQ, which is emotional intelligence. Self-awareness, social awareness. Right, so what you're adapting right now is social awareness. So I'm seeing going like this, you're being, so, you're, you're being self-aware. But what's the next question? You're trying to take an out-of-body experience to find out where I fit in this conversation. That's using self-awareness. And guess what? You haven't used a lot of it. But here, you're going to use a lot of it. You can tell I've used a lot of it, right? And, that, and the, good, the good thing about the, uh, EQ, emotional intelligence, that's when you can grow. And they found that Fortune 500 CEOs are more cognitively intelligent than they are, excuse me, emotionally intelligent than they are cognitively intelligent, even though they come from the pedigree. But it's their EQ that they're using, not their pedigree that they're using. Okay. And if you, our shot, brother, is to be high on the EQ. Because there's nothing we can do if we didn't go to Harvard. Going back to college is not going to be our plans. You got a wife and kids. Right. See what I'm talking about? So that right there is good. So last part, follow up, follow up with me. Ring, 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 you call me Thursday afternoon, we'll be followed back up with me. Uh, hey Matt, this is Mark Case again, uh -huh. uh, PHP agency. I'm just calling to follow up with you. Uh, have you had time to watch the video? I did. You did? Uh -huh. Hello. So which part of that video did you like better? The, um, the making money part or the saving money part? The making money part. The making money part. So, is your situation still the same? I mean, has anything improved since the last time we talked? Nope, nobody's promoted me yet. All right, so here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to get together with you for about 20 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, no, 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 you're, 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 you're giving up the goodies again, man. Okay. Entice me, seduce me. Um, how do you do that? You just So, how, how, bad, how bad do you want to change your life? Bam! <laughs> How, ask me again. How bad do you want to change your life? Bad. Okay, so here's what you need to do. Are you telling me? Okay, so here's... Get them one more time. Get them with the family question, because then that's going to really not come out. Yeah. You said how bad you want to change your life. Now you would ask them, are you ready to make that impact in your family's life, specifically your kids, so you can potentially spend more time with you? All right, so are you ready to, 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 uh, to make some moves? Are you ready to make some moves for your family, man, and, 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 and you know, put yourself up to a position where you can really yeah, yeah, but, dig but, in and yeah, take care? Yeah, I'd like to tell you, I'd like to have, talk to you a little bit more about it. Oh, you would? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's, uh, what, what day, would, would, would a Tuesday night or a Saturday morning would be better for you to, to, to come out to the office. So what, which would work better for you? Which would work better for you? Tuesday night? What, when, when can you invest some time? Tuesday night, 7 p.m.? Saturday morning at 9.30. Okay. So which would, which, would make, which would work better for you? When can you invest some time to come in and talk to me? Tuesday night or a Saturday morning? Saturday morning. Saturday morning, great. 
Uh, my office is in Oak Brook. I'm going to text you my address. Uh, I'm going to give the receptionist your last name to make sure you, you can come in with no problems. Uh, just Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Okay, or, or Saturday morning. Or Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Which will work better? For you? Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Great. Uh, I'm going to give your name to the receptionist so you have no problem coming up. It's, uh, I'm going to text you the address. Mm -hmm. uh, I, want, I, would, I would ask that you show up uh, at business casual. Mm -hmm. uh, that just means no jeans, no gym shoes. Mm -hmm. A nice button up and some slacks would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, ask for me when you get to the, the front desk. Cool. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you and connecting with you and talking more about your family and, and getting to know you a little bit Good. Uh, when you get here at uh, 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. Cool. 9, 9 o'clock or 9.30? 9.30. Excuse me. Okay. All right. Uh, now, is there any reason I would not, you would not be able to make this meeting? Not that I know of. Not that you know of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you, you sound a little unsure of yourself again. Okay. I'll be there. You'll be there? Great. I look forward to seeing you at 9.30. I love that last one. You wouldn't do something and not follow through with, follow through with it, would you? That's basically what you're asking. You wouldn't say you'd do something and not do it, would you? It's a character, character tell. I didn't think so. You wouldn't be an assistant manager for nothing. Right. You seem like a follow through guy to, to, to me. Because so you get, you, you're just messing with their brain because you got to let them know there's a lot of people that's probably bullshitting this guy and I can't get over on this guy. And if I do, if, if I flake on him, I, very good. That's it. That's my chances. I'm done. That's all it is. That's the best way. That's the best way you can fish, man. That's the best bait on the hook. That's the best way. Instead of pushing up on them, that's way you can you can pull them. And I rather you pull them than push them. Because if if you are just just kind of bull rushing them, right? That's why I'm gonna hang up on you. Now, now there's a different story. If you kept asking them questions and they were never straight with you and they weren't answering your straight questions and they hung up on you, that's a different story. Now you got a, now you got a character issue. Right? And then you, got, then you just got a market issue. That's it. Right? And you just got to go through enough numbers, man. Right? 1031. What's the 1031 rule? Uh, 10 calls. Uh, three will show up, one will, one will actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Follow through. Ten calls, half of you reach, three will do something about it, one actually shows up and does something about it. That's it. Done. Cool? Yeah. I gotta just keep doing it, man. Drill, practice, rehearse. Drill, practice, Just make it natural. They're kind of rough right now, but just keep, just can be a natural about it. Okay. That's the flow. Okay? Did, did Becky give you my uh, top 20, top 10 prospecting questions? Uh, I think so. Let's get your name at the bottom. Yep. That's it. Okay. Use that as the bullet right there. Okay. Right? Because you want to fire right away. You know, in, in the Marine Corps, they toss the market shit. As soon as, you, as soon as you target, take a breath. Squeeze. Don't pull the trigger. Squeeze the trigger and let the weapon discharge surprise you. Like, boom! Oh, shit. Because you just squeeze the trigger. So what am I saying? Don't panic. You got to be relaxed. Squeeze the trigger. Don't pull it. Squeeze the trigger. And then boom. That's your target. Appreciate you winning right today. No problem. Well, man, good. Did it help you out? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah? Okay. A little bit or a lot of it? A lot of it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks for being a prop. No <laughs> Thanks for sharing your story, bro. No okay, good job. Keep it up. All right. We'll get it. Thank you, bro. All right. Eighty-five percent of your success or failure is due to the first fifteen percent of your process. And in our style of business, in our business model, that process is prospecting, approaching contact. People don't want to be sold, people want to buy. Fix that part of your process, you fix your business. Instead of dreading your business, you end up loving your business. And the people you do business with, love your business too.